Welcome to the ATCM channel. Today we are going to discuss an anaphylaxis of an young adult. Yes. Should we start, sir? Yes. Yeah. Patient, 18 year old male, came to the ER with complaints of breathlessness following the consumption of prawns today, sir. First, in the 10 second assessment, initial 10 second assessment, patient was conscious oriented and uh, has difficulty in completing his sentence, sir. So, we, uh, we went with the primary survey. Airway, airway is appear patent, no secretion, C spine appears normal. Airway, what we, we you want to see in uh, anaphylaxis case? In case anaphylaxis, secretions. any strider. Uh, airway, edema, just airway. Edema is most important. You have to check the airway for any edema. Yes. Okay, secretions may not be there. It is edematous, inflamed. Okay. Here, the airway appears patent, okay. no secretions. Sir. And then breathing wise, uh, air entry was bilaterally equal with uh, respiratory rate of 22 per minute and saturation of 94% on room air, sir. And then the, uh, at this point of time, uh, we identified that he is uh, having a difficulty in the breathing component. Mm -hmm. So we had uh, connected him with a uh, nasal mask of with 4 liter of oxygen. Nasal mask with 4 liter of oxygen. Face mask. Face mask. Yes. What is your opinion? Nasal prongs with 4 liters. Up to 4 liters, you can give nasal prongs. Mm -hmm. More than that, if you are keeping only, you need to have a mask. Mm -hmm. Okay. Otherwise, what will happen? Suppose you are giving 1 liter oxygen and you are putting mask. What will happen? Is it good? No. It minimum is 4 to 6. Minimum? Uh, see, the, what happens if you are putting a mask and 2 liter oxygen? Many a times you can see that patient may be on high flow oxygen, they put mask, then they, when the doctor tells the uh, nurse or EMT reduces it, reduces it, then even at one liter of oxygen, will be putting the mask. What happens? Recirculation. Carbon, Carbon dioxide, dioxide will uh, re-enter to the body. Okay. Two liter, up to two liter is like uh, your room uh, oxygen. Okay. So you are adding carbon dioxide to that unnecessarily. So, if you are having very good oxygenation, patient may not go to hypoxemia. So, patient is having hypoxemia, uh, this uh, manure alone will produce more mm -hmm. severe hypoxia. So, if you are giving uh, more than 4 liter, then mask, less than 4 liter, but mm -hmm. always try to keep on uh, nasal prongs. The next in that circulation wise, the BP is 120 by 80 and pulse rate of 74 per minute. Disability was GCS E4, V5, M6 and pupils were 2.5 millimeters bilaterally reacting. Mm -hmm. Exposure patient was normal, tem normal temperature febrile and GRBS was 178 milligram per dl. Mm -hmm. So in the primary survey, uh, uh, breathing was uh, a slight at 94 percent and we uh, connected with the nasal prongs at 4 okay. liter. Okay. Post which uh, this uh, is uh, came to the secondary survey, sir. In the secondary survey, the patient had this uh, history, uh, like the past history of having similar episode of breathlessness and uh, uh, difficulty in uh, like scratching and itching all over the body after intake of shellfish. Okay. And this time... What is the difference between first episode and second, second episode of uh, allergy in a patient? In the second episode would be more severe. More severe. Why it is like that? The anti, like uh, the muscle destabilization would be faster on exposure to the allergen. Okay. So, it's already exposed. The antibodies are already formed. Okay. So, the re reaction will be more quicker and more severe. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's why we try to, uh, we tell them to try to avoid yeah. the allergen. Okay. Second episode can be very severe. So, this time he had taken prawns which is closer to the shellfish category of the food items and he had developed itching and facial puffiness within half an hour and okay. he was rushed to ear. Okay. On arrival to ear, he also has complaints of voice change. Sir. Okay. And in view of this uh, history of the voice change, uh, it was advised to give him injection adrenaline. Okay. How do you give? Adrenaline, we take the direct ampule which comes in concentration of 1 is to 1000. Okay. We take 0.5 ml and give IM and okay. deltoid or the antral as okay. aspect of the thigh. Okay. Why not IV? I you give IV. adrenaline IV, what will happen? So, many a times uh, this is given uh, without uh, caution, IV was given. Okay. What will happen if you give IV? It is a direct cardiac stimulant, so it causes... Yeah. Um, it causes severe tachycardia severe. and cardiac dilatation. 
So we have to try, we have to avoid IV adrenaline unless until one is the patient should have severe uh, shock or something like that or you need to have an expert with you, okay. And dilution should be corrected, infusion protocol should be uh, maintained properly. Otherwise, uh, in a peripheral center uh, or even in a tertiary care center like this, according to the standard guidelines, only IMA is required. Never give IV uh, adrenaline unless until the patient is in shock sure. or arrest. Okay. So, what was given for this patient? I am in deltoid. It was given 0.5 ml of 1 inch 2000 dilution or mm -hmm. adrenaline was given. Mm -hmm. Soon after the injection, within 5 minutes, his voice has been recovered and he okay. feels better. So okay. After which, there is for monitoring purposes because giving one injection of IM doesn't permanently cure it. He can recur going into that uh, anaphylaxis. Okay. So, second episode can occur. Second wave of anaphylaxis can occur because we have already taken something, shellfish is there in our body. Allergen and is... allergen can release again and again. Okay. So, first episode you are treating with adrenaline. Second episode can occur in the same patient after some times. So, what way you can prevent that? According to this National Resuscitation Council, European Council guidelines, only adrenaline is given. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Other than that, if you read other guidelines, ACLS protocol, what other things or uh, there normal will be second practice. line therapies like which we can use like corticosteroids and what uh, steroid you give? Hydrocortisone. Any steroid can be given. Hydrocortisone, Dexona, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Okay, steroid should be given. Okay, that prevents the Mass further episode. Okay, prevention of further episode. Acutely, it will not act mm -hmm. because most of the steroids take minimum four hours to act. So, it will not be any benefit benefit to the patient acute episode. That's why resuscitation council have uh, avoided that. Mm -hmm. But for a patient who is getting recurrent episodes like this, this uh, whatever is there inside body can again produce problem. So, you have to give hydrocortisone. Mm -hmm. Other drugs? Antihistamines. Antihistamines like? Diphenhydramine first class. H1 and H2 H1 blocker. And H2. H1 blocker is? Diphenhydramine. Here uh, CPM, chlorpentramine malate, etc. in all these things. Or normally we give only chlorpentramine malate, IV chlorpentramine. What, what you told? Diphenhydramine. You have diphenhydramine here. Huh? It is available. It is available as cup syrups. You can see many cup syrups will have diphenhydramine. We do not have any injection for that. We have CPM that is avil and yeah. then uh, ranitidine, yeah, H2 yeah. blocker. H2. So, H1 and H2 blocker has to be given. Okay, so routine practice, give adrenaline, IM, then give hydrocortisone to prevent next episode, H1, H2 blocker. This much you have to give, but resuscitation council guidelines, it is only adrenaline. Okay, that is correct because they want to treat the acute episode. Anaphylaxis. Anaphylaxis. Then if the patient does not improve with your first dose of adrenaline, what do you do? The resuscitation guideline has this uh, algorithm for refractory anaphylaxis mm -hmm. uh, in which they establish that if there is an already uh, established access lines, mm -hmm. they can start with an adrenaline infusion. Mm -hmm. With uh, using a peripheral line, using low dose IV adrenaline infusion, sir, mm -hmm. 1 mg, that is uh, 1 ml of uh, 1 to 1000 adrenaline is taken in 100 ml of 0.9% uh, NaCl, that is the normal NS, 1 mg of adrenaline is mixed in 100 ml of it and started with slow infusion, mm -hmm. by infusion pump. Okay. So, this adrenaline can be, uh, ideally it has to be through the central line, but uh, in anaphylaxis it can be given through the peripheral line. Mm -hmm. What what is the anticipated adverse effects when you are giving adrenaline through the peripheral line? The heart rate tachycardia. That occurs in any, uh, whether it is central line or peripheral line can occur. It's it awesome. can produce uh, vasoconstriction. Okay. Yes, yes. Severe vasoconstriction, ischemia of the limbs can occur. But here we are using very low dose. But if the patient, you are admitted, admitting this patient to ICU and high dose infusion is given through the peripheral line, that is not advisable because that can produce limb ischemia. Here it is okay because life threatening condition, we have to save the life, not the limb. So, adrenaline infusion can be given. What other ways you can give adrenaline? It, other ways is like suppose if there is an airway complete or partial airway obstruction, then we can use a nebulization of adrenaline. Okay. Where 5 ml of uh, 1 mg per ml of adrenaline can be put in the nebulization mask and nebulized. Okay. So, that will be the easiest method for any peripheral uh, centers. So, many doctors will have uh, like uh, fear to fear of uh, this adrenaline IV or uh, IM adrenaline. 
that sometimes if you are not confident enough to give adrenaline you can easily give this uh, nebulization okay because it will not produce uh, any major adverse effects but it it will relieve the airway edema the most important problem in this uh, anaphylaxis is airway edema okay you will not be able to manage in a peripheral setting so immediately you can give adrenal nebulization then uh, if uh, then you are confident then you can give im but the ideal situation is im adrenal is the best okay what happened to the patient afterwards how do you manage it's so, a so regular monitoring for the looking for again signs of nfl axis mm. and uh, the management was uh, here in our case the patient on one dose of adrenal itself has become normalized and he never river like developed any other further okay what are the uh, si- what are the differential diagnosis for uh, mm. anaphylaxis like this only uh, fa- facial edema lip edema what is angioedema congenital angioedema c1 s2 c1 s2 deficiency how do you manage that how do you manage that ffp FFP is the no, management for uh, C1 stress deficiency. C1 stress, if it is available, you can give, but it is not available in most of them. So, immediately you can give. One of the closest differential diagnoses for uh, this uh, uh, angioedema is uh, hereditary angioedema. There it is, C1 stress deficiency. What other common drugs can produce uh, angioedema? Mm-hmm. Commonly used drugs. NSAIDs can produce. NSAIDs can produce anaphylaxis, allergy, angioedema, mm-hmm. any drug can produce, any anti-hypertensive which is known to produce uh, angioedema, only angioedema, yeah, uh, not anaphylaxis, uh, allergy, yeah, AC inhibitors. AC inhibitors are very commonly used drug that can present with angioedema, not allergy, uh, uh, rash, all this, they present with angioedema. So, we have to always think about other possibilities because he is getting recurrent uh, this okay. one we have to take the family history of uh, angioedema in this patient like family history is very important for hereditary uh, angioedema okay so that has to be taken okay discharge yes. so on discharge what you discharge we need to make sure that uh, the patient and the bystanders are educated about the allergen mm-hmm. and further prevention of the allergen in day to day life and also giving him for the prescription like uh, for further few days of antihistaminics and the corticosteroids uh, okay and also what like, are the other things you because we most of the patients will have uh, this uh, anaphylaxis to uh, nuts so yeah. that will be added to almost all indian uh, curries most of them will have uh, nuts or uh, peanut cashew nut they add So, any time this person can develop allergy, if it is a, a nut allergy, like a shellfish allergy, only non-vegetarian. So, what other uh, drugs he can, you can advise to carry? EpiPen. EpiPen. EpiPen is an adrenaline pen, pen, pen form. If you inject exactly that 0.5 ml will be delivered. Okay. So, that can be advised. It is available in India. So, if patient is affordable, you can give that. cost around 12000 rupees something but it is a life saving uh, drug that can be advised so can you tell the criteria for diagnosing anaphylaxis there are two basic de- criteria like yeah. uh, two differentiation first uh, according to first definition it is like acute onset of the illness within yeah. minutes to hours with involvement of the skin mucosal tissue or both along with that either one of the following like including airway compromise circulation compromise or gastrointestinal components in the second definition we have is there is not uh, essentially the requirement of a typical skin involvement even in the absence of the typical skin involvement with a, in a person with a known allergen developing any of the a b or c that airway breathing or the circulation component uh, problems will be defined as an aphylaxis okay so in uh, sometimes you have to do emergency uh, uh, tracheostomy okay. uh, surgical airway has to be uh, mm-hmm. has to be ready in er in case of uh, severe anaphylaxis mm-hmm. so that also we have to be very careful okay so we have discussed about anaphylaxis okay. close differential diagnosis angioedema okay angioedema can be congenital and uh, acquired okay thank you